meditate on the divine master and pray for peace and harmony hari om tat sat om stapakaya jadamasya sarvadharmaswarupine stapakaya jadamasya sarvadharmaswarupine avatar varishtha ramakrishnayate namaha asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrityorama mrutangamaya om shanti 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 let us bow down to shri ram krishna the embodiment of all religions the supreme god incarnate let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been discussing since last two classes a topic learning is essential shri ramakrishna has himself stated as long as i live so long do i learn so if we have that attitude of learning then certainly you will have peace and happiness you will not raise any complaints you just reason out and try to learn through experience we are not to worry about things happening on the other hand we must think of god more seriously and apply the attitude of learning then everything will be all right so what we find in shri ram krishna's life everything he has given to us his whole life is really a remarkable life who has set a model to us to follow him there was a maid servant by name brinde in the dakshineshwar temple garden where shri ramakrishna stayed once master mahashay came there for the first time to see shri ramakrishna he saw brinde standing outside shri ramakrishna's room So Master Mahesha asked her well I have come to see the holy man I heard there is a holy man here is the holy man in then the maid servant said yes he is in the room then master mahesha asked another question how long has he lived here the maid servant answered Oh he has been here for a long time Master Mahesh said again asked Does he read many books the maid servant said books oh no they are all on his tongue Master Mahesh had just finished his studies in college it amazed him to hear that Sri Ramakrishna read no books Master Mahesh said perhaps it is time for his evening worship may we go into the room now will you please tell him we are anxious to see him then the maid servant replied no no need to be anxious go right in go in and sit down so 
This is what happened at the Shri Temple. Now, what was it that enabled this maid servant to speak so heartily about Sri Ram Krishna's unlearned wisdom and to so very warmly encourage the earnest seekers of his company to approach him freely? A famous uh, French author, Roma Rolla, has written a book on the life and on the life and teachings of Sri Ram Krishna. It's a very good book. There he mentions these simple peasants who are nearer by their very simplicity to the profundity of Sri Ram Krishna's beliefs than the doctors of the town and the devotees of the temple. So what is important is that we should be simple. If we are simple, you are sure to get God. You are sure to reach Him. You are sure to experience peace and happiness. So, in order to do that, one has to be earnest in his spiritual practices. And Sri Ramakrishna, how he was at every stage ready to learn and do practice to understand the different faiths. He had tremendous faith and devotion to God. He worshipped Divine Mother Kali at the temple. He did long meditations. Then finally he had the ecstatic experience of the vision of Mother. Then later on he began to practice other faiths and Divine Mother herself was providing him all the necessary things. Once Totapuri, a famous saint of that time, a realized soul, he was on a pilgrimage and in the course of his wanderings he chanced to come to Dakshineshwar. He did not know Sri Ramakrishna. He had not even heard of him and he never had any idea that he was going to be blessed with a disciple so outstanding as Sri Ramakrishna. Totapuri came and he was stopping. He was standing at the main portico in front of the Kali temple. He saw Sri Ramakrishna dressed in an ordinary dhoti, sitting there in an abstracted mood. There was something special in him. Totapuri recognized that. What was that? His face was luminous. So that luminous face powerfully attracted Totapri's attention. There was a glow, powerful glow on the face of Sri Ramakrishna. Totapri found Sri Ramakrishna very fascinating. And he saw great spiritual potential behind his innocent face. The more Totapri saw him, the more was he attracted. And then he went close to him and said, You seem to be an advanced seeker after truth. Would you like to learn Vedanta? Because Totapri had the experience of the highest non-dualistic state. And he was overwhelmed to see here Sri Ramakrishna, who was very well qualified to receive that Advaita 
ನಾಲೆಡ್ಜ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟ್ರಮೆಂಡಸ್ ಲವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಟು ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮದರ್ ಕಾಳಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಎ ಕ್ಲೇ ಇಮೇಜ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಇಮೇಜ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ನಾಟ್ ಮೃಣ್ಮಯ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ವುಡ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಟು ಹರ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಸೊ ಶಿ ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಮದರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಫೈನಲಿ ಅಗ್ರೀಡ್ ಟು ಫಾಲೋ ವಾಟ್ ತೋತಾಪುರಿ ವುಡ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ತೋತಾಪುರಿ ಇನಿಷಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸನ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ವಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ego totally devoted to the supreme truth shri ramakrishna could experience that highest state of advaita in a very short time of just three days he got the experience of the highest absolute truth whereas totapri himself had to do tremendous austerities for 40 years to experience that absolute truth all this was an uncommon drama the guru volunteering to the disciple and offering to bless him with the highest state of realization instead of the earnest disciple going about in quest of a guru and surrendering himself to him but the point we want to emphasize here is the recognition by totapuri at sight of the worthiness of shri ramakrishna to scale the heights of advaita sadhana totapuri had indeed the seer's eyes there are still others who were almost as gifted as totapuri was and had seen and divined shri ramakrishna the best people of that period one by one came and met shri ramakrishna they were amazed by the tremendous spiritual personality of shri ramakrishna there was one pandit padmalochan a great scholar a great spiritual aspirant he was practicing religion with all earnestness he met shri ramakrishna at that time shri ramakrishna had already uh, practiced tantra sadhana and he had achieved the result this padmalochan because he was advanced in spiritual practices he could by seeing shri ramakrishna he could make out what a great personality shri ramakrishna was he said i see in you divine power and manifestation he felt immensely that shri ramakrishna was the mine of spiritual power and god is fully manifested in him another devotee pandit vaishnava charan he came to see shri ramakrishna when he came shri ramakrishna had already practiced vaishnava sadhana the pandit was overwhelmed by seeing shri ramakrishna and spontaneously he composed a sanskrit hymn and he sang in front of shri ramakrishna when he sang the song shri ramakrishna was in an abstracted spiritual mood and vaishnava charan was praising him as an incarnation of god another uh, devotee uh, his name pandit gauri they were they were all very famous at that time he met shri ramakrishna at that time shri ramakrishna had almost finished his all spiritual practices 
and Sri Ramakrishna was endowed with divine splendor. Gauri saw Sri Ramakrishna and said, Well, I see tangibly realized in you all the high spiritual states recorded in the scriptures I have read. Whatever I have seen the characteristics of an experienced uh, realized soul, all those characteristics are fully manifested in you. And he was feeling tremendous joy by seeing such a person. He said further, I find in you the manifestation of such exalted states as are not mentioned in the Shastras. Your state has far transcended those mentioned in the Vedas, Vedantas and the Shastras. And he said, you are not a mortal being. The reality to which incarnations owe their origin is there in you. All these were incontrovertible judgments of persons who knew what they were saying. It's not they are praising Sri Ramakrishna. They felt tremendous spiritual power in Sri Ramakrishna. Thus we find genius capable of discovering greatness at a glance. If you study Sri Ramakrishna's life and if you read the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, you find how many types of devotees would come and talk to him, would take counsel from him. He would understand their problems immediately and would give most human and practical solutions. Sri Ramakrishna's approach to problems and reaction to happenings were singularly unlike those of the common run of mankind. And his approach was in every case the right one. And his reaction the wholesome one. Sri Ramakrishna had a super sense which helped him to go straight into the heart of a matter, whereas others stopped at the surface and judged from externals. His conclusions were refreshingly original, resulting from spiritual insight, unaffected by prejudice or partial vision. There is an incident illustrative of this character of Sri Ramakrishna. On a certain occasion, the priest in the temple was carrying Lord Govinda's image. While he was carrying it, taking to the another place, he just slipped and fell down. Thereby, the, one of the legs of the image was broken. There was a terrible confusion. All people were panic-stricken. What had happened? And now what's to be done? Whether the worship could be done to that broken image, or should it be discarded? The general tradition convention was that broken image could not be worshipped and it should be discarded. That was what tradition and books uh, tell about it. They were all in great uh, puzzle. Finally, the problem was referred to Sri Ramakrishna. At that time, Sri Ramakrishna got into an ecstatic mood and gave a very human solution, which was entirely at variance with the 
verdicts of the scholars and prescriptions of the pundits. He advised the broken limb to be set right, after which the broken image could continue to be adored. Not only did he make this suggestion, he himself carried it out with his skill in repairing injured parts of the images. He set right the leg in such a way that no trace of the brokenness could be detected. It was done so perfectly well. The master's solution came from a loving, feeling heart which saw in the image a living entity and no inert stone or metal. The others were unable to rise to his heights of intuitive perception and wallowed in the marsh of a little learning. When later on someone asked Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, is Govinda of the Dakshineshwar Temple broken? Sri Ramakrishna disposed of the matter by a short remark, Oh, what a fine understanding! Can one who is an indivisible whole be broken? Can anybody break the indivisible one? The whole universe is that one consciousness. Nobody can divide it. It is undivided consciousness. Nobody can break it. That was his reply. But the scriptures do contain statements that a broken image is not auspicious for worship. But Sri Ramakrishna can never be accused of anti-scriptural behavior. Here one thing we should note, when he said this, there was tremendous love and devotion to God. So, he could literally see the God and so he could uh, give this conclusion and he could say that the image could be worshipped again. So that means, through this incident, Sri Ramakrishna is pointing out to us what is needed in spiritual exercises is that we should intensify, we should cherish sincere love and devotion to God. That's the indication. The more you practice you do, the more Love you must feel inside your heart towards God and you must feel you are approaching Him more close and you feel in your heart that coming close to God you would feel more happy and peaceful than be away with Him. To be in the world means to be far away from God. But thinking of God if you are in the world, you are near to God, you are not far away from Him. So, very important point that we should understand and practice is that constantly we should remember God. Constantly we should remember. So that is the point which Sri Ramakrishna has said repeatedly that every day, every moment, keep thinking of God, then everything will be all right. All the impurities are washed away, devotion is increased, and you come close to God, and then you will realize Him. Page 688 God sports through man as well. Sri Ramakrishna said, I see man as the embodiment of Narayan. As fire is kindled when you rub two pieces of wood together, so God can be seen in man if you have intense devotion. If there is suitable bait, big fish like carp gulp it down at once. When one is intoxicated with prem, one sees God in all beings. The gopis saw Krishna in everything to them the whole world was filled with Krishna. They said that 
they themselves were krishna they were then in a god intoxicated state looking at the trees they said these are hermits absorbed in meditation on krishna looking at the grass they said the hair of the earth he is standing on end at the touch of krishna devotion to the husband is also a dharma the husband is god why shouldn't be so if god can be worshiped through an image why not also through a living man but three things are necessary in order to feel the presence of god in an image first the devotion of the priest second a beautiful image and third the devotion of the householder vaishnava charan once said that in the end the mind of the devotee is absorbed in the human manifestation of god but you must remember one thing one cannot see god sporting as man unless one has had the vision of him do you know the sign of one who has god vision such a man acquires the nature of a child why a child because god is like a child so he who sees god becomes like a child god vision is necessary now the question is how can one get it intense renunciation is a means a man should have such intense yearning for god that he can say o oh, father of the universe am i outside your universe won't you be kind to me you wretch you partake of the nature of him on whom you meditate by worshiping shiva he acquired the nature of shiva a devotee of rama meditated on hanuman day and night he used to think he had become hanuman in the end he was firmly convinced that he had even grown a little tail gyana is the characteristic of shiva bhakti of vishnu one who partakes of shiva's nature becomes a gyani and one who partakes of vishnu's nature becomes a bhakta master master asked but what about chaitanya deva you said he had both knowledge and devotion shri ramkrishna said sharply his case was different he was an incarnation of god there is a great difference between him and an ordinary man the fire of chaitanya's renunciation was so great that when sarvabhauma poured sugar on his tongue instead of melting it evaporated into air he was always absorbed in samadhi how great was his conquest of lust to compare him with a man a lion eats meat and yet it mates only once in 12 years but a sparrow eats grain and it indulges in sex life day and night such is the difference between a divine incarnation and an ordinary human being an ordinary man renounces lust but once in a while he forgets his vow he cannot control himself to master master shri ramakrishna said he who has realized god looks on man as a mere worm one cannot succeed in religious life if one has shame hatred or fear these are fetters haven't you heard of the eight fetters how can one who is eternally perfect be afraid of the whole of the world he knows how to play his game an eternally perfect soul can even lead a worldly life if he desires there are people who can fence with two swords at the same time they are such expert fencers that if stones are thrown at them the stones hit the swords and come back a devotee asked sir how can one see god shri ramakrishna replied can you ever see god if you do not direct your whole mind toward him the bhagavad speaks about sukadev when he walked about he looked like a soldier with fixed bayonet his gaze did not wander it had only one goal and that was god this is the meaning of yoga the chatak bird 
drinks only rain water though the ganges the jamuna the godavari and all other rivers are full of water and though the seven oceans are full to the brim still the chatak will not touch them it will drink only the water that was that falls from the clouds he who has developed such yoga can see god in the theater the audience remains engaged in all kinds of conversation about home office and school till the curtain goes up but no sooner does it go up then all conversation comes to a stop and the people watch the play with fixed attention if after a long while someone utters a word or two it is about the play after drunkard has drunk his liquor he talks only about the joy of drunkenness nitya gopal was seated in front of sri ramakrishna he was always in ecstasy he sat there in silence master said to nitya gopal smilingly gopal why are you always silent nitya gopal answered like a child i do not know master said i understand why you don't say anything perhaps you see perhaps you are afraid of committing a transgression you are right jaya and vijaya were gatekeepers for narayan they refused shank sanadaka sanaka sanatana and other rishis admission into the palace for this transgression jaya and vijaya had to be born three times on earth again there is a instance of shri dama he was viraja's gatekeeper in goloka shri krishna was in viraja's house radhika went there to surprise krishna and wanted to enter the house shri dama would not admit her and so radhika cursed him to be born as a demon on earth but shri dama too cursed her but there is one thing you should remember when a boy walks holding his father's hand he may fall into the gutter but what has he to fear if the father holds him by the hand the story of shri dama is narrated in the uh, brahma vivarta purana kedar who was a government official had been living at dhaka for some time he had been transferred there from calcutta he was a devotee of shri ramakrishna and had gathered together at dhaka many devotees who came to him regularly for spiritual instruction at one as one should not come empty handed to a religious man the devotees would bring kedar sweets and other offerings we shall stop here chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously with it O name streamed down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself O self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for very souls various are thy names O lord in each and every name thy power resides <coughs> no times are set <coughs> no rites are needful for chanting of thy name So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, <coughs> mine is no prayer for wealth or attenuum. the playthings of lust or the dice of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant thou sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet ah oh, how i long for the day when in strange separation from thee o lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be <clears throat> in unwavering devotion 
neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though tears may soul asunder. O thou, who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous reign tranquility, <coughs> may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good be at all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour in in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.